Have you ever wondered about the ripple effect of a single battle on the course of history, specifically the Battle of Actium? This significant event, a colossal clash in the Azure Mediterranean, marked a turning point for the Roman Empire and by extension the world. The repercussions of this battle echoed through centuries, shaping cultures, influencing politics and crafting the course of civilization. Join us as we journey back to 31 BC to explore this pivotal moment in history. The stage for the Battle of Actium was set by a tumultuous period of Roman history, a time when the Roman Republic, weakened by civil wars, was teetering on the edge, and a new form of government, the Roman Empire, was waiting in the wings. Our story starts with the First Triumvirate, an unofficial political alliance between three of Rome's most powerful men, Julius Caesar, Pompey, and Crassus. This alliance, however, ended in a civil war that saw Julius Caesar rise to power. But his reign was short-lived and his assassination in 44 BC led to another power vacuum. Out of this chaos emerged the Second Triumvirate, formed by Octavian, Mark Antony, and Lepidus. But this alliance too was fraught with tension and rivalry, particularly between Octavian and Mark Antony. Octavian, Caesar's adopted son and heir, was a master of political maneuvering. Mark Antony, a skilled general and one of Caesar's most trusted allies, was equally ambitious and had the loyalty of many of Caesar's legions. Their rivalry was further complicated by the involvement of Cleopatra, the Queen of Egypt. Mark Antony's romantic and political alliance with Cleopatra was seen as a threat by Octavian, who feared that Antony would use Cleopatra's wealth and power to seize control of Rome. Octavian used this fear to his advantage, turning the Roman Senate and the people against Antony. He declared war, not on Antony but on Cleopatra, cleverly framing the conflict as a battle to defend Rome from foreign influence. Meanwhile, the Roman Republic was in turmoil. Political instability, economic crisis and social unrest were rampant. The traditional Roman values were being replaced by a hunger for power and wealth. The stage was set for a power struggle that would decide the future of Rome. In 31 BC these tensions culminated in the Battle of Actium. On one side the combined forces of Mark Antony and Cleopatra, on the other side the forces of Octavian, backed by the might of Rome. The stage was set for a clash of titans, a battle that would forever alter the course of history. The Day of Reckoning arrived on September 2, 31 BC. As the sun rose over the Ionian Sea, two formidable fleets, each harboring the fate of an empire, faced each other in a standoff that echoed with the tension of a ticking time bomb. On one side, the seasoned military leader Mark Antony, bolstered by the wealth and power of Egypt's Queen Cleopatra. On the other, the ambitious Octavian, future Augustus, yearning to consolidate his power and herald Rome into a new age. As the morning mist lifted the stage was set for the Battle of Actium. The initial standoff was a palpable test of nerves and strategy. Each side gauged the other looking for weaknesses, awaiting the opportune moment to strike. Antony with his heavier more cumbersome ships chose a defensive stance. He formed his fleet into a crescent, ready to absorb Octavian's attack. His plan hinged on Octavian's forces breaking against his defensive wall like waves against a cliff. But Octavian was not to be outmaneuvered so easily. He had lighter more agile ships at his disposal and a cunning tactician, Agrippa, at his side. They decided on a different approach, one that would test Antony's defensive line to its limits. Instead of a head-on assault, they chose to engage in a war of attrition, using their speed and agility to launch hit-and-run attacks on Antony's flanks. The battle raged on, a dance of naval tactics and strategies, each side trying to dictate the rhythm. The sea became a canvas painted with the hues of war, the iron gray of the ships, the white froth of their wakes, the fiery orange of flaming arrows cutting through the air, and the crimson stains of fallen warriors. As the day wore on, a decisive moment emerged. Cleopatra, with her reserve fleet, broke through the chaos and sailed away, leaving Antony's forces in disarray. Some say it was a strategic retreat, others a blatant desertion. Regardless of the motive, it was a turning point. Antony, torn between duty and love, chose love. He abandoned his men and followed Cleopatra, leaving his forces leaderless. With Antony's departure, the morale of his fleet plummeted. Octavian seized the moment and pressed his attack. His ships, like a swarm of wasps, stung Antony's disoriented forces from all sides. The battle, which had once been a balanced dance, now turned into a massacre. By the end of the day, Octavian stood victorious, marking the end of one era and the beginning of another. 
The Battle of Actium was not just a clash of titans but a pivotal moment in history. It was the death knell for the Roman Republic and the birth cry of the Roman Empire. And at the heart of it all, Octavian, soon to be Augustus, who would lead Rome into its golden age. In the aftermath of the Battle of Actium, the world would never be the same. The waves of destiny had indeed unfolded, bringing with them a profound and irreversible change. The aftermath of this monumental battle was as dramatic as its unfolding. Mark Antony and Cleopatra, once powerful figures who held sway over vast territories, met tragic ends. Unable to face the ignominy of defeat, Antony took his own life. He fell on his sword, a Roman's traditional way out. Cleopatra followed suit, choosing to end her life rather than be paraded as a trophy by Octavian in his victory procession back in Rome. The manner of her death remains shrouded in mystery, but the most enduring tale is that of the deadly asp, a symbol of divine royalty. With Antony and Cleopatra out of the picture Octavian stood unchallenged. He was the master of the Roman world. The power vacuum left by the demise of Antony and Cleopatra was swiftly filled by him, and he began to consolidate his power. His authority was no longer just in name, but also in practice. He transformed the Roman Republic into the Roman Empire, marking one of the most significant political transitions in history. Octavian now known as Augustus, ushered in a period of relative peace known as the Pax Romana, or Roman peace, that lasted for over two centuries. This era was characterized by significant advancements in art, literature, and architecture. Rome, under Augustus, flourished, and became the epicenter of civilization. However, the transition was not without its costs. The Republic, which had been a symbol of Roman liberty, was replaced by an autocratic regime. The Senate, once the powerhouse of Roman politics, was reduced to a mere rubber stamp institution. Rome had traded its liberty for peace and stability, a decision whose ramifications echoed through the annals of time. The Battle of Actium was not just a battle but a turning point that shaped the world as we know it. The ripples of this monumental event, this wave of destiny, continue to be felt, shaping our understanding of power, politics, and the rise and fall of empires. The echoes of the Battle of Actium still reverberate through the annals of history. This monumental conflict, a clash of titans on the azure waters of the Ionian Sea, has left an indelible mark not only on the course of the Roman Empire but also on the very fabric of our global culture. The Battle of Actium, in its essence, was more than a mere military engagement. It was a pivotal event, a fulcrum on which the scales of history balanced precariously. And when they tipped, it led to the fall of the Roman Republic and the rise of the Roman Empire, an epic that would shape the Western world for centuries to come. In the realm of literature, the Battle of Actium has served as a rich source of inspiration. From the timeless verses of Virgil's Aeneid, to the modern interpretations of Robert Graves, the echoes of Actium have been immortalized in ink and parchment. The image of the brave and valiant Octavian, standing tall against the might of Antony and Cleopatra, has captivated the imaginations of countless authors and poets throughout the ages. But the legacy of Actium extends beyond the written word. It has shaped our perceptions of Roman history, influencing our understanding of the dynamics of power, the intricacies of political alliances, and the ruthlessness of ambition. It serves as a stark reminder of the capricious nature of fate and the indomitable spirit of humanity. The Battle of Actium has also influenced the way we perceive leadership and strategy. The cunning and foresight displayed by Octavian and his trusted advisor Agrippa, have been studied and analyzed by military strategists, historians and scholars alike. It serves as a testament to the fact that victory often lies not in the strength of arms but in the power of the mind. The waves of destiny set in motion by the Battle of Actium continue to shape our understanding of history, proving that even a single day can change the world. The echoes of this legendary conflict still resonate, reminding us of the power of courage, strategy and destiny in the grand theater of human history. In the span of a few short minutes we've traveled back to 31 BC and witnessed the Battle of Actium. We've explored the tension-filled prelude, experienced the fierce combat, and walked through the consequential aftermath. We've delved into its legacy, recognizing how it shaped the course of history. Each element, each decision, every individual, contributed to this intricate tapestry of events. As we close this chapter remember that history is not just a series of events but a complex tapestry woven by countless individuals decisions and battles like the Battle of Actium.